Hi everyone, thanks for making the left turn for today, Saturday, December 15th, 2018. I'm George Favar. Welcome back to the Jack's Left channel and welcome to our new series here on the channel, Jack's Maps. First of all, I want to thank all of you, all of you viewers and fans who made the first episode of Jack's Maps so popular. It was one of the most uh, popular premiere episodes I've ever had and so you've inspired me to before 2018 is out to bring you another show so here we are we have another episode of Jack's Maps coming at you today our next episode will be in 2019 in around I would say late January but what I'd like to do today is to get us rolling because there's a lot going on. I'm going to be talking with you in coming episodes about different maps that I've found and I'm going to try to kind of give you more insights into what things looked like downtown and around Jacksonville, around Duval County uh, many years ago. So let's go ahead and get started. What a there's no better way to start uh, this show than taking a look at uh, old Jacksonville Terminal, currently our prime Osborne Convention Center. Uh, no better way than to look at the way a traveler would have arrived into Jacksonville, let's say in the 1920s, of arriving by train. Okay. The our current convention center used to be our railroad station. It was our railroad station from 1919 until 1974. So when you arrived, first of all, you might ask yourself, well, you know, why not drive back then? Well, the highways were just getting started. This is a 1926 road map of Florida from the Florida Department of Transportation Archives, previously, previously known as the Florida State Road Department. And so here we see a 1926 map, a road map of the state of Florida. And we, of course, see in that northeast Florida area, Jacksonville. And uh, we see, of course, roads that seem to wind from town to town. If you look towards the west, there is no Interstate 10. There, on this map, there are no interstates. There are no expressways. There are roads and highways. And we're going to really drill down and start looking at, at the street level, the highway level, at Jacksonville back then. Florida was growing due to the Florida land boom. And Jacksonville was no exception. This road map shows state numbers, state road numbers, put on some of these roads that, that we still know of today. We can see uh, road numbers assigned uh, to what we would later know as U.S. Highway 17, U.S. Highway 1, U.S. Highway 90. So there are these, these roads out here uh, that are available for people to use. Uh, and later on in the 1930s, Phillips Highway is going to be constructed. So until the road network is improved, and it will be substantially, a lot of people are going to arrive to Jacksonville. Or they're going to arrive by train or steamership. And I'll have a lot to say about, about that. Here we see the old Jacksonville Terminal, an illustration of the old Jacksonville Terminal and the cars. So can you imagine trying to get around? Uh, let's say... You're new to Jacksonville in the 1920s. Let's say you're taking a job. Maybe it's a job at a factory. Maybe it's a job, maybe even in a theater. The Florida Theater would open in 1927. Theaters were popular back then. If you're new to the area, you know, you, you, you arrive here. There's a lot of hustle and bustle as there would be with any city. Back in this time, not only were there cars, but there were street cars right next to the railway depot. 
the, you see the old, uh, the remnants of the old railroad depot, and you see the side of the, what we know as the Prime Osborne Convention Center at the time, Jacksonville Terminal. And look to the right. You see amenities for people, a restaurant, and, and there are hotels uh, within walking distance. A lot, of, a lot of foot traffic. But, you know, if you were going to go around town, you needed to, to, to get, you know, from point A to point B, you know, downtown or in the outlying suburbs, okay, then you're going to need a map. There's not going to be a navigation system in your car. There are no smartphones. There are these paper maps. So we'll take a look at some of these maps because I've got a lot to show you. Now, this is a map from 1920. And we see some familiar names. And then we see some not so familiar names, and we see some places that uh, we might recognize, and then places we don't. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. We see State Street, we see Adams, we see Duval Streets, we see these streets, we see um, Kings Road, Moncrief, Durkee Street, uh, which is Myrtle. Enterprise Street. We know it now as Beaver Street. Look, there's Macduff. Macduff Street. Riverside Avenue. If you go further out, looking out to the southwest, Orange Park Road. Okay, There's no Roosevelt Boulevard yet. There's no Interstate 10. There's no I-95. There's no Fuller Warren Bridge. There's no Main Street Bridge. Take a look. Take a look where the Main Street Bridge would be. There's a ferry there. You can take a ferry. Uh, if you look over uh, downtown, uh, you'd see the Clyde Pier. That is where steamerships would arrive. So you could take uh, steamers to Charleston, New York, Providence, Boston. So we see the vitality of the St. John's River. People are using the St. John's River as transport to go from city to city, okay? There's industry that's going on on the St. John's River. Uh, shipyards. Downtown Jacksonville is a port of call. We look down towards what at that time would be, around that time I believe there was South Jacksonville. Uh, Hendricks, we see Atlantic Boulevard, we see Kings Road. Now remember, we don't have Phillips Highway yet, so you're going out King's Road to go to the south. So it's amazing. It's amazing when you look at it, how things have changed. Let's jump forward to the 1950s. And I want to take a look and focus on this map of downtown Jacksonville. Let's start with Hemming Park. Surrounding Hemming Park was the Cohen's Department Store, the St. James Building, what we now, uh, where our city hall is now, where MOCA is, the Museum of Contemporary Art, that was the Western Union Building. Of course, we have Snyder Memorial Church, where the federal courthouse is today, the Brian Simpson Federal Courthouse is today, uh, there was a J.C. Penney department store and Woolworth Five and Dime store. If you think of the 1960 uh, civil rights uh, protest, uh, that, that was where that occurred. Now, I can time it before 1959 because behind the J.C. Penney and Woolworth is what's designated as parking. Now, just in time for 59, the Robert Meyer Hotel, the Robert Meyer Hotel, was constructed. And just, just across from Julia, where the state attorney's office is today, that was the United States Post Office and federal building back then. Just up Julia Street, the Ambassador Hotel. Now, the Ambassador Hotel, 
Uh, it started out we as West Church Street Apartments and uh, later on became a hotel. And then it was abandoned in the late 1990s. And there uh, is an effort to uh, rejuvenate it, make it hotel again. Okay, and then we go further, let's go further down towards Forsyth and Bay Streets. Uh, now, again, this has to be, I think, more of the early 1950s because at this point, the Greyhound bus station is on Bay Street. Uh, so uh, we see the Mayflower Hotel. Uh, we see the, um, and the Greyhound bus station in this map is at Hogan and Bay Streets. Later on, of course, in the 1950s, later on in the 1950s, a uh, new bus station was constructed and it was demolished just this year in 2018. And, and it had moved further down Forsyth. So, uh, and, and that old station um, from the 50s into 2018 was located on Pearl Street. Now, uh, so, you know, you have these theaters, you have Barnett Bank, which now is being uh, renovated. It had been abandoned for a while. So there are all these uh, places, the Seminole Hotel, which has since been demolished. So uh, a lot happening in downtown Jacksonville in the 1950s. And you start seeing, of course, the, uh, the importance uh, as they, they, have, they have put a lot more importance on parking uh, as more and more people are driving into town. Yes, in 1959, more people were driving to Florida and flying to Florida. They were taking the train less. Here we have a 1959 official Florida roadmap. And we see a lot more highways. We start to see the interstate coming about. Okay. In the 1950s, the interstate highway program was authorized and funded by Congress, signed by President Dwight David Eisenhower. And so a lot of road money was going to start pouring into Jacksonville and throughout Florida. And more people would just jump in the car and come down to Florida. Now, this was before Disney World. Disney World didn't come along until 1971. So you have people going, in a lot of cases, to different roadside attractions, uh, all sorts of different places, and visiting the cities. Now let's drill down on the North Florida of 1959. Now remember, Jacksonville, and you see it outlined there in yellow, that's the city of Jacksonville, and we have Duval County and the surrounding area around it. Jacksonville and Duval County would not consolidate until 1968. So keep that in mind. Now, here we see US 1, we see US 17, we see 90, we see Atlantic Boulevard. Now, this is before the days of Butler Boulevard. Uh, and we see, we see State Road 13, San Jose. Uh, we see 17, Highway 17. Uh, and for the first time, we see State Road 21, otherwise known as Blanding Boulevard. We see Normandy Boulevard, State Road 228. Uh, we see uh, State Road 115, Lem Turner. And though it's important to remember what we don't see in this map. We don't see Interstate 95 yet. We don't see Interstate 10 yet. Of course, certainly way beyond in the future is I-295. There is no real beltway to speak of other than if you look towards the east, you start to see Southside Boulevard and Southside Boulevard going into towards the Arlington Expressway. And look, hey, you've got, now you've got the Matthews Bridge. Matthews Bridge, Main Street Bridge, Acosta Bridge. Or Warren Bridge, originally a toll bridge, was built in 1954. You don't yet have the Hart Bridge. There is no Buckman Bridge. There is no Dames Point Bridge. 
okay if you're wanting to cross the river by car get downtown or get to arlington uh you know so uh an interesting time and you know i think that that um gives you i guess an idea of what the average traveler traveling the roads back then really had to deal with okay you really were going downtown uh, to get around uh if you were wanting to go out onto the other side and in of the river and and go elsewhere uh and so let's go ahead and jump ahead to 1964 on this 1964 florida road map we could see even more highways we can see even more work done on the uh getting the interstate built uh the 1960s uh, was a time of a lot of construction going on throughout Florida. And so we focus on North Florida in 1964. Now here we have Southside Boulevard designated as alternate US-1. So we're starting to tell travelers coming to Jacksonville, you can route around, get on one of our expressways, get on the Arlington Expressway. So uh, we also have US-1 Phillips Highway. We have, we have, of course, Beach Boulevard, Atlantic Boulevard. Uh, we have US-17, US-1, US-90. And now we have Interstate 10. And we can say, hey, you know, you, you have an option on the west, the western side of Jacksonville, to go out and use the uh, the interstate, the expressway, nonstop, uh, without having to uh, stop at stoplights, uh, you had that option. So, and also too, if you looked at, remember, the Southside Boulevard of the early 1960s was nothing like the Southside Boulevard that we know of today. Uh, and same thing in some areas of Beach Boulevard and Atlantic Boulevard. There was not as much development. In, 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 there's not like East Arlington as we know it. No, there was not. It was, you know, there was a lot of country still uh, in Duval County. Okay, a lot of trees and things like that. Okay, we had not spread out as much uh, as we would later on. Now, of course, remember, still no Buckman Bridge still no heart bridge uh, but uh, you had more options downtown though if you take a look at the pink you do see part of um, the original basically the original expressway system you see going through Jacksonville the old city limits of Jacksonville you have interstate 95 okay so you can let's say you're at the airport Imason airport you can you can you can get on over uh, you could, you could, once you get over, you could hop uh, onto I-95 and take I-95 all the way out, uh, it looks like, all the way out uh, towards Lake City, okay? So the concept of expressway driving, interstates, and things like that, by 1964, uh, it had arrived. And though, you know, still, again, not as many bypass options uh, as there would be later on. So, a lot of this starts to tell the story um, of how the city's growing. Now, this is about two or three years before Regency Square Mall was constructed and opened. Now, I'm going to now go ahead and blast us forward to 1972. Now, when you look at this 1972 roadmap of Florida you start to see what looks somewhat familiar. You start to see, you know, I-75, I-95. I-10 starts to really uh, develop. You start to see, and as you look down towards South Florida, you're starting to see more development down there. And we're going to drill down in a moment on the North Florida of 1972, which incidentally is a couple years before I was born. And would have been the kind of map my father if he had a map, would have been the kind of map he would have. He moved to uh, Jacksonville from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, I believe around 1970. 
I know for certain he would have been living and working here in Jacksonville in the year 1972. Now, the early 70s man and woman and kid and everyone else, you know, in Jacksonville, um, they um, would have now the benefit of the Buckman Bridge. Yes, I-295. And you can see that I-95 by this point has been constructed. US-1 Phillips Highway, you know, is, is still there. But more people can hook up onto the interstate system. They can just jump onto an interchange. And let's say, you know, by 1972, it looks like you could at least go out towards 103rd Street on I-295. Uh, and uh, you can look at it and see, you can start to see, for example, too, you, you do get to see Edgewood. You see where that, that, that road is a little bit more, it's more, is prominently displayed. Uh, and, you know, the usual roads. And you can see where, um, by this point, the airport is no longer at Imason. Imason is closed. Uh, and a new airport was constructed further up I-95. And so I-95, uh, you can go up, uh, up almost to the, uh, towards the Georgia, the Florida, Georgia state line. And so, uh, now remember by this point though, okay, by 1974, this is within two years of the, um, the Amtrak station being relocated from Jacksonville Terminal uh, the uh, the new uh, a new Amtrak station was constructed uh, off of Clifford Lane. Okay, so so the uh, in 1974 the Jacksonville Terminal closed and would be abandoned. The train station we saw at the beginning it would be abandoned until the 1980s when it would become our convention center. So it, more people, even more people flying, a lot more people uh, using the roads and driving and a lot of fewer people taking the trains. And the same thing when you look at, you know, with, with trucking, deliveries. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up on this picture of Interstate 95 in Jacksonville in the early 1970s. We see a traffic jam on Interstate 95 northbound heading towards the Fort Warren drawbridge, yes? It was a drawbridge, and it was a toll bridge, and it was Interstate 95. Yes, back in the good old days. And these people were sitting there waiting to pay a toll on their way to get across the river to go towards I-95 North and I-10 West and US-17. And of course, hey, take a look at Interstate 95 southbound, two lanes headed towards Beach Boulevard, headed towards Phillips Highway, all points south, and I-95 heading down uh, towards St. Augustine. So it's a reminder that traffic is a constant, uh, and it's also a reminder of how far we as a city have come and how we still have a lot to deal with when it comes to people moving around our city, around our city and through our city. So, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank you for your inspiration, your motivation, your ideas, your support through the years, and I'll have more of Jack Smaps for you in January 2019. And I'm going to have a lot for you even later this month and going into January. I've got uh, later this month in December, I have Jax 83, Jacksonville as it was in the year 1983. Then in January, History Jacksonville returns from holiday break with our Museum of Science and History and our Cedar Hills and even more episodes as we continue on with season seven of History Jacksonville. And I'll be following the upcoming city elections coming up in March and May of 19. I'm gonna have a lot going on. 
Uh, if you like what I have to bring you, then uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be bringing you a lot. Uh, the best is yet to come. I'm very optimistic about where things are headed. I think we've, um, for lack of a better word, and I guess this makes makes sense given that we have a picture in front of us of the 1970s of, of a traffic jam in the 1970s. But you know what? On the Jack's Left channel, I'm getting my groove on, and I hope you are too. And if you're getting your groove on uh, with these shows, please let your friends know. Please share them with your friends uh, and your enemies, for that matter. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, thanks, folks, uh, and take it easy. And if I don't get a chance to talk to you or see you, um, before uh, Christmas, I want to wish you all uh, happy holidays. Take it easy. See you later.